Hello, good morning, everybody. Man, it is finally feeling more like spring and I'm real excited about that. Are you? I actually had the windows open again yesterday. And so the house is airing out. It feels really good. It feels really fresh. And also I sat down and I did my next 90 days kind of goal outline process. I at least started it. I haven't fully flushed it out. And um, so that's in process and it just feels like this fresh new season is starting. I don't know if you guys feel that way. I am feeling that way and it feels really good to me. Um, and so what I want to talk to you about today is whether or not you're potentially confusing your pre-clients or your potential clients, right? And so if we're not sparking curiosity, we're probably sparking confusion in them and people don't know how to move forward with us. They don't know, like they see we have the solution, but there, there's something that's holding them back. So if you're hearing crickets, I want to run through some common mistakes you might be making in your branding or your brand messaging, and we can dial those pieces in and get some clarity around that. Sound cool? Cool. All right. So your clients have problems that they face every single day, right? You know this intuitively, you know this inherently, and you know they want their life to be easier and less complicated, especially um, they want the solution also to be simple. Um, I'm actually in the process of simplifying some of my services because sometimes the solution wasn't as simple for them as it was for me. Um, so clear branding and clear brand messaging in particular is how you are going to help them know what the quickest path to their solution will be. And it will also help them know that you're the person to help guide them down that path. Okay. And so clear brand messaging is how you do that. And today we're going to take 15 minutes and we're going to look at our own brands, right? We're going to look at our Facebook posts. We're going to look at our Twitter posts, Instagram posts, blog posts, whatever content that you are putting out there. Maybe it's a podcast. Look at it from the perspective of someone who has absolutely no clue who you are or what your company is about. Okay. And if you hear my cat, he is really upset that the door is shut, but you know what? That's just how the cookie grumbles, Oliver. So he's going to have to hang out out there. Um, so here, um, ultimately, right. It's our responsibility. If we want to have freedom lifestyles or work from home or have six figures, which is not available to us where we're at currently, right? In our nine to five, like that may, may not be an option for you. There might be a ceiling. So it is your responsibility to pursue clients and clearly invite them into your business to help them achieve success in their story. And that's getting them from point A, where they are feeling a lot of pain to point B, where they want to be. Okay. And so here are the few ways that you might be losing and confusing your clients. So number one, you're not necessarily sticking to one voice. And when I was talking about brand voice, um, actually this weekend with someone, they were like, what is that? And I had to pause and think for a minute, how do I explain this to a person who is absolutely not in my industry, not in my world? I know what it is kind of intuitively because I'm looking at it day in and day out, but brand voice is your tone. Um, so maybe you are a very relaxed person. You're very laid back. Um, there it's very low key, like nothing really shakes you. And you, you come across that way, very laid back, leaning back away from, you know, you're not, you're not pushy. Um, you're very easy to get along with your go along for the ride. You get the picture, right? And so if you are coming across that way in your content, um, and then you're promoting a product and it becomes very urgent and very salesy and you know it, it becomes icky right because it doesn't feel like you and so the voice and the tone changes um some people have a lot more of like a rebel attitude and they're a little more aggressive in their language and maybe they use some strong language um in order to like kind of kick people in the pants and say like hey are you doing this why not right like this is your life go go live it how you want um, some people have a wild streak of humor in their copy and I love to read it and, um, 
And that is their tone of voice. They have a way of framing things that is just funny, right? So that's the voice. And if you're kind of bouncing between a bunch of them, you're going from like soul drenched words and boss camp style to like Jen Sincero's like you are a badass type of language. Like that is going to be jarring for your audience if they have gotten used to communicating in a certain way, in a certain style. Stick to one voice. Um, you can sell. Um, without being salesy. And I like to think of this as an invitation, right? You're asking them for an even exchange of energy. So you're going to provide the service in exchange for dollars. And I exchange my dollars for services in my business. There's this even exchange. And when that feels uneven, it feels it starts to feel sideways, right? So you can still invite and you can still ask without being salesy. And you can also seed instead of selling about your programs, right? and products that have gotten people results. And, and you're just kind of dropping like, hey, my client got this result in my program, which is coming up next week. And you can learn more about that there if you're interested. And then you keep talking, right? That's a seed planted. And they're like, huh, I want that result too. And so you keep going on and on and on. Number two, you're pointing to too many different things. A lot of entrepreneurs feel like, especially in the beginning, they're trying to figure out what works best and what people are gonna respond to best. And when they're not sure, they tend to put out all these different offers all at once. And that's where the mistake happens. You can put out lots of different offers, but only put out one at a time and wait for it to have been given ample opportunity to be rejected, which is super uncomfortable, right? Because we feel this urgency. We want to make money in our business. We want to see results, but we are getting a result. We're learning that this is not what people are interested in. So don't point to too many things at once. It causes decision fatigue and then people end up not making a decision at all, especially if your options are way too similar. So that's another thing is like, you might have two options on your website, but it doesn't really make sense. Like what's the difference, right? Or they're too extreme and there's not like a happy medium in the middle, right? So one thing at a time, once you figure out what is selling well and you dial that piece in, then you can offer a complimentary thing that is filling a gap in your business or in your client's um, journey to the next level, okay? So then at number three, which is a little bit based on number two, you've stopped inviting, okay? So maybe you've gotten into a place where you're just putting out a lot of content and you know, you've not actually been asking them to take action on something like click this button or sign up for this free webinar or um, download this freebie or whatever it is, or, hey, I have this $97 product or $197 service or mastermind program, whatever it is that you're promoting, you've stopped inviting because you haven't been getting a good response and you've been hearing crickets and you're not sure why things aren't selling. So you've actually stopped the actual invitation part you're like, hey, I do this, and you you haven't shared how people can work with you and what capacity they can work with you. And we have gotten into a place where we assume that people know how to work with us. Maybe if you're a nonprofit, you've assumed that people know how to donate to you. I just had a conversation with one of my clients. He was like, I just, I just assumed they knew how to donate. And I was like, no, you have to invite them. And he was like, well, we told them once, like last year. And I was like, you have to tell them again, right? So there's this idea that um, we just assume people know how to work with us or know, like go to the website. They don't know that if they're following you on Instagram or maybe a Facebook page or wherever you're at, they don't know. They, they need to be invited. Everybody likes to be invited, right? To something. And then they need to be told how, how to do this, what the process is like. Okay, so keep inviting people. If you stopped inviting in your content, reinvite them. Ask them to respond to you, right? Ask them what they think about something. Invite them to engage with you. And number four, you're holding back. People can always feel when you're holding back from them. And if you aren't sharing your best information up front and freely, I believe you're doing yourself a disservice. And there's this mindset and perspective, and there's all kinds of different philosophies out there, but that here is a teaser or a sampler of what I can do, but I'm holding my best information back. I am of the philosophy that I give my best information first because my best is my best all the way through. And you're gonna get just as much out of the rest of this content and it's all my best, 
right? All of it is my best content. Um, all of it is my best services. I'm giving 100% everywhere. So there's not going to be any disconnect and be like, oh, this isn't as good as what we get in the Facebook group. Oh, this isn't as good as we get on Instagram. This isn't as good as what comes out on the podcast. You know, this is all consistent across the board. And when people can feel that you're a giver and that you're generous, then they feel more inclined to take you up on working with you because they can really see what you can do. And as you build a relationship with that client and you have been giving freely to it, the next time they need a solution, guess who's at the forefront of their mind? It's you. And they, they are going to be looking to you as the go-to person for their, their problems and the solutions, right? They've, they've come to trust you because of the quality of work that you put out. And so if you're hearing crickets, if you're not converting your offers, whether they're free offers or they're paid offers, I believe it's time to take a deeper, more investigative look into your brand messaging. And if that is something that you're looking to do, especially this spring, I'm all about spring cleaning right now. So I'm spring cleaning my own brand. I'm cleaning things up. I'm changing up the website. Um, I'm offering a brand assessment to help you very quickly, very effectively dial into the things that are not captivating your clients, that are not converting these pre-clients into actual clients. Um, and we're going to help you square these pieces away so that you can really start to gain momentum in quarter two because it's right around the corner. Okay. And you guys, you're not helping your clients by not getting the help that you need, right? To fix your brand message um, or to sit down and do it yourself. You're not helping them by putting this off. This should be a priority and it should be something that if it's been at the bottom of your list, go ahead and move it up a couple of notches. Okay. And so I have put the link for the intensive in the description and there is still that 20% off spring cleaning discount code 5C framework from last week. Um, and so that is available to you. And I would love for you to take me up on that offer. And I'd also just love to connect with you about your brand. It's always an honor to be invited into somebody's business journey and help them get from point A to point B and to see them like skyrocket and take off once we get over this obstacle and this hurdle. Today's a little bit of a short video today. That's all I've got. Thank you so much for taking time to watch this video and spend time with me. It's always an honor to walk alongside you guys. Let me know what you're working through in your business and your branding. And maybe there is a disconnect somewhere and how can we connect those pieces? I'm always interested to know um, how we can get further together. Okay. That's it today, guys. You have a great one and I'll see you next week. Bye.